In today's episode, we're going to use the Ender 3 V3 SE to print TPU, or flexible filament. And I'm going to use my setup that I created in a previous video where I use an Ender 3, older Ender 3 board, to drive an extruder with some custom Arduino code. And I'll use the information I gather from that to make a custom Cura profile that gets rid of the stringing in TPU. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Printing TPU or flexible filament on an Ender 3 can be challenging, especially those early units that had Bowden tube or even the latest ones like the Neo. But this Ender 3 V3 SE not only prints faster, but also has a direct drive extruder, so it requires its own special profile. And this could work on other machines like the S1. So I'm going to try to create a new one and I'll show you how I do it. As I mentioned, I already have a TPU profile for Ender 3 machines, such as the Ender 3 Neo, but that has a very long Bowden tube. Direct drive is different. I've used this profile on machines like an S1 to reduce the retraction. But this Ender 3 V3 SE can actually print faster. So I wanted to see if I could make it better. So I want to test my TPU to make sure I get the right retraction. So I want to know how much compression I'm actually seeing in this TPU. And this setup is something I showed in a previous video where I took an old Ender 3 board, I reprogrammed it with Arduino to control a stepper motor in this case, the extruder motor. And I have an on-off switch so I can turn the motor on and off. And also, I have a push button where I can control the direction so I can extrude or retract based on push or release. I added a short section of PTFE tubing on the end here. And this represents the PTFE tubing that's inside the hot end assembly from the extruder to the nozzle. It's not exact, but it's close. So what I want to do is measure how much I'm going to compress the TPU by using the motor. So I took another coupling, put a screw in the end of it so it's blocked, and I'll put that on the end of the PTFE tubing. And so now what I'm going to do is actually push TPU into this until it stops. I'm not going to force it, I'm just going to manually push it until it stops. I'm going to use this off-brand TPU. I've got several of these spools. They're some of the worst for stringing, and if I can get this to work, I can get anything to work. So that's what I'm going to use for the experiment. So I'm not going to use the motor. I'm just going to manually pull the lever, push it with my fingers until I feel it bottom out on the coupling. And there it's bottomed out. And once I've got that, I'm going to use the clippers, cut it flush to the top of the extruder arm, and then take this coupling off, pull it out, and I have my base length. This is uncompressed. This is how long it is uncompressed. And I did that three times to calibrate it. And when I compared them, they're like within a tenth of a millimeter difference. So this is a good baseline. Now I want to do this again, but let the motor do the compression and see how much it's compressing by comparing that one to the baseline. So I've got the coupling back on. I got the PTFE tubing going into it, but it's not all the way to the coupling. So I'm going to turn this on and just let it run until I see that it stops moving. It's slipping on the extruder. And we're there. So then I'm just going to cut flush once again. And now I can just take the coupling off and let it bring it right out to me. I did it three times. And now when I compare, I got consistent results. So now I can compare these to the baseline and see how much it's compressing. So I did this three times. I line it up on one end and I can see the gap at the other end. And it's, it's pretty big. And when I put it on a scale, I always get the same reading, seven millimeters. So seven millimeters of compression is caused by the extruder pushing the TPU into the PTFE. Now that I know that there's seven millimeters of compression, I can retract seven millimeters and take the pressure off. But I know the end of the TPU will still be in the same position in the nozzle. Anything greater than that, I'm pulling it out of the nozzle, which I may not want to do. So I think seven millimeters is a great starting point. But I did run some prints while I was doing all this at lower retraction. Let me show you what I got. I did use the exact same brand, but only in red for the prints. So here's one millimeter of retraction at a 0.28 layer height. The stringing is terrible. I took a shot in the dark and increased it to four millimeters of retraction and it got a lot better. 
but I think I can do better than this. So I'm going to go back to my profile for the ND3 Neo or Bolden style, and I'm going to adjust it based on this new data. Before I had 12 millimeters of retraction at only 15 millimeters per second. And speed wise, I couldn't print over 30 millimeters per second on those machines or I'd get bad results. And it would take two hours and two minutes to print this octopus. The Ender 3 V3 SE has a direct dry sprite extruder and it also says it can print up to 250 millimeters per second. So I'm going to try and print faster and see if it works. The filament on its spool says 220 to 260 degrees is the print temperature, but in their advertisement they show 180 to 210. I found that 205 works great with this filament. The first step was to change retraction from 12 millimeters to 7 millimeters, which I measured. And I'm going to go very fast, 65 millimeters per second on the retraction speed. For print speed, I'm going to double to 60 millimeters per second, and wall speed double at 30 millimeters per second. All this after slicing took 45 minutes out of this print. The results were great. The layer adhesion is really good. It's bonding well. First layer went down beautifully and almost zero stringing. The print is very flexible and when I squeeze it I don't feel any layer separation so it's very solid. And timing wise it was almost spot on. It said an hour and 15 minutes to print. It took one hour and 13 minutes. So this Ender 3 V3 SE does indeed print faster TPU. I did print a small spiral mode or vase mode print and it printed out just fine and very flexible and holds together nicely. So the profile works for that style of print as well. If you like electronic projects like this, you should check out PCB Way's project page. PCB Way shares electronic projects where you can get the circuit board, the bill of materials, schematic, like this Halloween pumpkin PCB. Get the Gerber file, bill of materials, and you can just order the PCB if you want or assembled PCB. And if you scroll through, there's the bill of materials, description about the project, sometimes a video, and schematics. So it's a great place to find electronic projects. And don't forget, you can always get 10 circuit boards for $5 plus shipping from PCBWay. So check them out, PCBWay.com. If you've got a direct drive under 3 or under 3 clone or even a V3SE, you can download this profile in the description below. I have other TPU around the shop here that I should probably run through the same test and see what their retraction is and write it right on the spool. So this little setup here, I probably need to package it a lot better and call it the TPU tester. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy a membership through Fangs.com. And if nothing else, click on that Film of Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.